Today on Rooted Daily, we talk about how we can weather the storm of spiritual depression. Welcome to Rooted Daily, the podcast where in 10 minutes or less each day, we root you in the Bible so you can grow with God. I'm Brandon Levy, and today we're talking about how Christians can weather the storm of spiritual depression. And we're going to look at a psalm that you'll likely recognize, where a godly person is grappling with one of the darkest points in their life, Psalm 42. And it tells us, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. So something has gone terribly wrong. The psalmist says in verse 10 that his bones suffer mortal agony and his enemies mock him asking where his God is now. And it looks to them Like he's been abandoned. And in fact, his soul is downcast. He feels isolated from God. And he asks God in verse 9 why he has forgotten him. He doesn't understand his circumstances. And from all we see in this psalm, there's no happy ending here. There's no resolution to his physical suffering or his internal agony. Within the psalm, he doesn't overcome that. But in his unease, we see the roots of how we can rely on God even when it seems like God is around to rely on. The psalmist gives us an example of things we can do to weather the storm of spiritual depression. First, the psalmist sings. In verse 8 of the psalm, he writes, At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. When things seemed hopeless, the psalmist sang. Now, this song may not have been sung cheerfully, maybe from the gut. I can think of lots of hymns, even the ones about hope and joy that we can sing at our lowest moments. Even the songs from the nursery are truly just those prayers to the God of our life. We have hope because through the darkness, we can still sing, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, that things were dangerous And so we should sing. He says in verse 15, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the psalmist says that he may have been singing for his life, but isn't it amazing that he is singing at all? When you are feeling forgotten by God, sing, give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second, The psalmist responds to his circumstances by asking why. In verse 9, he asks God, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? You know, sometimes Christians fall under the impression that why is a dirty word. We think that if we ask questions, that means we are doubting God. The psalmist certainly didn't think that. He knew that he had a God who was big enough for his questions. I think we're reluctant to ask God why because we're afraid of the answer. We don't actually trust God to sustain us. We read the promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us, sure, but when it comes down to it and we feel left behind, instead of turning to God for understanding, we think it's best to just bottle it up and not trust that God knows what he's doing. Psalm 42 shows us that is not the answer. If you don't understand your suffering, Ask God. James 1 tells us that when we face trials and don't have the wisdom to understand them, then we should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Ask God for help to understand your pain. But when you ask, as James continues, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Trust God 
enough to ask him why. Not because you doubt, but because you know that all wisdom comes from him and he can help you make sense of your circumstances. Third, the psalmist puts his trust in God's love. That word forgotten in verse 9 is an overstatement and the psalmist knew it. By verse 11, he says to himself to put hope in God and to praise him as his savior. He knew God hadn't forgotten him. It looked like God had left him, but the psalmist's trust never wavered. In the midst of asking why, the psalmist was still proclaiming his faith in God's love. He wrote in verse 8, By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Even though he says it looks as if God has forgotten him, he never stops believing that God was in control through his adversity. John wrote in his first epistle, chapter 4, verse 16, we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has nothing to do or has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Psalm 46 describes the trust in, in the Lord's love. And while the psalmist was hurt, while he was feeling lost, he was not afraid. His God was in control and his perfect love cast out all fear. In the storms of life, the psalmist shows us that even in the worst of times, we can trust God's love. Finally, in his spiritual depression, the psalmist preaches to himself. More than anything, when he felt abandoned and was full of pity for himself, he asked twice, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. We must learn to preach to ourselves, to build ourselves up when we're down. When we see ourselves slipping into spiritual depression, we should look in the mirror and ask ourselves why. God is our Savior, so put your hope in him. Today we know that we have an even greater reason for that hope. Jesus Christ died so that we could triumph over death. Today we can look in the mirror and preach the words of Romans chapter 8 to ourselves. We can say, listen, soul, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither uh, height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the, the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can say those words to ourselves in the mirror. The psalmist preached to his soul when he felt weak. And when we struggle with seeing how God is still in control of our lives, we too should learn to preach the gospel into the mirror. Psalm 42 shows us that there will be times we feel abandoned. Others will mock us and say that our God has left us behind. Their words will make us feel forgotten. But even in those moments, we can sing. We can ask God for understanding. We can trust in his love. And we can look in the mirror and remind ourselves that if God is for us, no one can be against us. That's how we weather the storm of spiritual depression. And that'll do it for this episode of Rooted Daily. And I'm looking forward to sitting down and talking with you next time. Hey there, thank you for listening through this episode of Rooted Daily. We think it's so important that you grow with Christ continually, using the Word of God as your only foundation. That's why we release these episodes every weekday, so that you can root yourself daily in the Bible. 
Make sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app so you don't miss us. And if you think a friend would benefit from hearing this good news, hit the share button. Most importantly, if you're ready now to take the next step, repent, be baptized, and hand over your life to Jesus, shoot me an email to brandon at rooteddaily.com.